This episode will be the first of a three, yeah, probably a three-part series on a topic both near and dear to my heart. A topic many of you have likely heard thrown about, whether you're a software engineer, manager, product owner, CEO, or anyone else working in a professional capacity. That topic is technical debt, or tech debt for short, the all too popular phrase that many fear yet few truly understand the implications of. This is likely because tech debt shows up in multiple different forms, all of which are important and affect us here at Discover in expensive and stressful ways. <laughs> Before I go into the various forms, let's try to define what tech debt is. In a nutshell, technical debt results when you produce a piece of code in a way that makes a later created piece of code more difficult or time consuming to produce. So basically, if you make a technical change that makes a later task harder to achieve, you've incurred technical debt. It's aptly named as debt, as it's something that builds if you don't pay it down and often suffers from compound interest and the snowball effect of growing worse the longer it's left uncorrected. I mentioned that tech debt comes in multiple flavors, so in this series I'm going to focus on the most common three, breaking one down per episode. Those flavors include 1. Writing a piece of software while still learning about how to write that kind of software. 2. Writing code using the simplest or fastest way over the better or best way. And 3. Writing code on top of tech or infrastructure that is aged and is no longer supported. So let's start with flavor one, coding and building while you learn. Have you ever gone back and looked at something you wrote years ago and thought, man, today I'd write this differently? Yeah, that's because you've learned and experienced more since you wrote it. It's perfectly normal to be better at it now than you were before. Code is no different. Imagine you're building a wooden table, but all you've ever used before is a handsaw and some wood glue. You design the table, then start building it. Partway through, I introduce you to a tape measure and a miter saw, and wow, the next few pieces you make are way better than the first few. Actually, they're much better, and make the old parts look bad. Before you get a chance to remake the old pieces, though, I introduce you to a pocket hole jig and screws. This new tech expands the possibilities of your table build, and you quickly realize that you could have made a much stronger, better looking table had you known at the beginning what you know now. When it comes to writing software, this form of tech debt basically stockpiles code that could have been written better, but the necessary knowledge wasn't available at the time. As you continue to pile it up, you end up with this hodgepodge of differing levels of quality, all in the same repository of code. For the table, this would mean mismatched legs, joints, and potentially even surfaces. An ugly table. So how do we begin to tackle such a problem? It's safe to say that we can't know what we don't know until we know it, so seeing into the future isn't an option. The answer is actually pretty simple though, but as is the way with hard to swallow pills, there will be some audience members here who scoff at that solution. Thus is life. Technical debt incurred by building while you learn is inevitable, but can be planned for and squashed by fitting regular tech debt review time into all project planning models. Personally, I recommend that 10% of all development time be devoted to technical debt coverage. And it's how my own team has successfully functioned over the last two years. What? 10% you say? How will we hit all of our nth quarter goals, Jeff? How will I feed my children? Think of the shareholders! Yeah, alright, pitchforks down. I realize that 10% sounds like a massive amount of time. The truth of the matter though is that things take as long as they do today due primarily to unpaid tech debt that is compounded over multiple generations of code. Were that paid in full each cycle, no debt would be incurred long term, and our ability to deliver software at a regular cadence would not grind to a crawl as a project ages. So my suggestion? Bake that time in. Steadily pay down the principal debt over time, and eventually you'll reach a point of manageable debt. By this point, tech debt payments will be recognized as a normal part of our business as usual, and we'll wonder how we ever existed without doing it that way. So that's a quick and dirty explanation of tech debt's first shape. I hope this video has been informative, and I do plan on having a second and third part out as soon as I can muster. But until then, I'm Jeff Godwin, and I thank you for a moment of your time. time, 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 time. <laughs>